So we left our mooring at Rufford and we're heading to Bursco. The Rufford branch is narrow in places, much like the Lancaster Canal. So the Rufford branch of the Leeds and Liverpool Canal is quite quiet, really, apart from the occasional narrow boat that's either coming or going from the Ribble Link. I haven't seen too many people just cruising for the fun of it. So anyway, we'll see, but we're, we're heading down to the Leeds and Liverpool today, and uh, this will be a new adventure for us, so we'll take you along. This was our first swing bridge of the day, and I was so full of confidence. And then it happened. First challenge one, me zero. So I looked around to see who she might be talking to. There was nobody there. It would have to be me. Carol's having some difficulty with this one, I think. You do quite often find that you need a fair bit of force, these things. Yeah, the, the locking mechanism on this bridge is incredibly heavy. Really not good. If you're traveling alone, you may want to bring a crewmate along to help you with the locks on the Rufford branch, just in case. Yeah, but then you're not traveling alone. Uh, had some difficulty with the swing bridge that we just did because there was a mechanism where the lock is that you have to pull straight up which is very heavy I don't know how uh, ordinary strength women <laughs> such as myself would be able to do that um, I needed to get Rob to help me and then we were scratching our heads thinking okay well he's got to get back across the bridge before I can push it open how do boaters do it when they're by themselves? And then, of course, this guy comes along walking his dog, and I pose that question to him, and he says, oh, they just moor on this side. I'm thinking, duh, you know, I've only had two cups of coffee. You would think that would have done it, but I think I can't keep blaming my problems on coffee. What's up, pumpkin? Hey, you coming out with me? Gonna sit out here in the sunshine. It's nice. It's a railway bridge. Mini arches. He wasn't watching where he was going. He was looking out over here. So I had to keep an eyeball on him at all times. Look at that sky. <laughs> it was so pretty earlier. So far, each one of these locks has been different. The last swing bridge had a very heavy mechanism that you had to lift. And then I got to this one and I thought, well, where are the, where are the locks? I was looking all over the, the gate, trying to figure out where the paddles were and all that. And then I happened to look over here and I'm like, oh, 
this is different. So this is another type of paddle mechanism. It's uh, certainly a crash course in lock operation coming down the Rufford. It's almost like no two locks are the same. Shout out to Saul. This really stumped us. <laughs> We've never seen one of these before. And uh, we weren't sure what we were supposed to do to get this one paddle open. But Rob finally figured it out. If I had had to figure it out, we'd have been here a month of Sundays. If you look on the cement, you'll see that um, there's, it's worn here and it's worn here. So we were trying to figure out which way do you turn this, you know? Couldn't figure out that you're supposed to pick it up because we didn't have any instructions to know how to use it, so. Yeah, we've never seen, we never seen a pattern <laughs> quite like that, this have we? totally different. I'm gonna put this around because that's how they had it. And then first of all, we lifted it to about, probably about 30 degrees <laughs> and nothing happened. So here we are at lock five and everything's been different on just about every lock and there's no instructions. We are trying to figure out how we're supposed to open this because there is nothing that tells you what to do. I mean, I've unlocked it. Ah, well, that, that was, I suppose. <laughs> I suppose that's it. That's as far as it goes. Let me look and see if there's anything coming out the other side. that works the opposite side doesn't it's it's locked up it's broken and I can't really tell if this side's working but, uh, we shall see and then suddenly I realized that it would go up to 90 degrees and then it worked fine and all the weeds came through so uh, yeah it's finally filling Yankees are coming down here. You're gonna need this, but that's the anti-vandal key. Yeah, almost all of these have this, and you have to screw it in to lock it until it's nice and snug. So. So um, Rob's a bit concerned about Liberty because it appears that the uh, area underneath the engine is getting wet when we're actually traveling, running, running the engine. It doesn't appear to be this, the gland, which Mick Fuller repacked and everything. So we're not quite sure where the water's coming from. He's trying to figure that out, whether it's a, a hose that may be isn't sealed properly or leaking or something we don't know yet so we're heading towards the next bridge and um, we'll just carry on and hopefully figure out what's going on sometime later today
peaceful willow tree. Lovely. So we moored up at bridge one on the Rufford branch. There's the main Leeds and Liverpool canal through there. If we go to the left, we go towards Wigan. If we go to the right, we go towards Liverpool. But we're also, if we go to the right, we go towards Bursco. So that's our plan. Here at, Bri here at Bridge One they have got a water point. The rest of the facilities sadly are closed. Lovely canal side. Cottages, aren't they beautiful? What a lovely spot to be. On the junction of two canals you get to see all the accidents as boats T-bone each other. The local residents just checking us out. Ducks are so pretty. They really are. They're just lovely looking birds. Bridge 32B on the Leeds Liverpool Canal. Some cool looking apartments. You even got your own chimney next door. I wonder if Fred Dibner ever climbed that one. There's Bursco Bridge from in front of the Blue Mallard. There's a water point here for boaters. There you go. So you just moor up to the side of the bridge here and replenish your water supply. So that direction is Liverpool. And as we turn around, off in this direction is towards Wigan. Nice to see the cobbles. It's a fine tradition. Perfect trip hazards. What could go wrong right next to the canal?
We passed a lot of permanent moorings in our search for a sunny visitor mooring. We decided to take a break at the slipway, where we had a brilliant crunchy chicken sandwich. Good service and really good food. We recommend. I spotted this chap carrying his coracle on his back when I was out walking Tilly by the Slipway pub at Bridge 32. It's the first time I'd ever seen one in use. I've seen drawings of them in the history books when I was a schoolboy, and that was about 60 years ago. Now, coracles are traditionally used in Wales, the West Country, and parts of Ireland and Scotland. But they'd already been in use by the early Bronze Age, because they'd been found buried in graves. And coracles used to be made of a willow frame with a tarred animal hide stretched over it. But nowadays they're much more likely to have a covering of calico, canvas or fiberglass. The big advantages of coracles over traditional keeled boats is that they can be used in only a few inches of water and are highly manoeuvrable and they're light enough for the user to carry. They have slightly different designs depending on which types of water they're going to be used on but essentially they're all largely a circular item similar to the one this chap was using and he was really kind enough to give me a demonstration of how it's steered and propelled. This is John, who's very camera shy. So we've got John Easton here and, and his wife Julie. Hi. Yeah, against the sunshine there. Now, we've got a problem here that um, Vetus, in their wisdom, decided that rather than just allowing us to put a new cap on our cooling system, we had to put a new neck and cap on. And of course, the old neck, when uh, John tried to take it out, was completely mangled. And, um, and he's had to apply a fair amount of beef to get this to the point where we are now. But on the bright side, um, we may be able to save over £800 on a new heat exchanger. So that's the way I'm looking at this. It's in, it's in. Good, good stuff. So he's just put, uh, yeah, and this was the, yeah, this was the, the old neck. This was actually the, the part that the old cap used to fit onto you can see that would be quite a strange shaped cap now to fit onto there. Um, there we are. That's there we go. Good stuff. Good as new. So all we have to do now I suppose is fill it with coolant and give it a try. Next time we'll explore Bursco, show you some of the conveniences the town has to offer, 
and a really cool shop that we're now following on Instagram. We'll take you on a day out at a very special place nearby and we'll enjoy a tilly walk together near our mooring. See you soon!